Welcome to this short podcast on artificial intelligence and the new world of digital marketing. My name is Chris Marshall, and I lead IDC's research in Asia Pacific, working on AI and analytics. And I'm really delighted today to have as my guest, um, Dr. Chi Han Yu. He's the co-founder and CEO of Apia. Now, Apia is a global AI SaaS company that's really dedicated on helping companies of all sizes um, tackle their biggest marketing challenges using artificial intelligence and helping them navigate the often very complicated uh, customer journeys that they have to drive greater revenues and, and growth within their companies. Now, Apia has got a, a, an ambitious vision of democratizing AI so that their solutions help more customer-centric companies build brand loyalty with their customers and helping them sort of develop a more rounded 360 view of their customer base and using AI to sort of deliver actionable insights. Um, so sort of turning a user into a customer and then a customer into a very loyal customer. So what's your thoughts on that, Jihan? Yeah, thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, uh, I think in the in the we are actually in a, a, a very exciting phase of a, of a, in applying artificial intelligence into marketing, because marketing traditionally has been a relatively uh, in, the, in 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 a long time ago. I think uh, people have to uh, uh, get guess teammates, all kind of market effects they will, and then also result they will get. But with AI, they are able to predict the future and predict with certain precisions, and based on that information, they can do the judgment ahead of time. That has fundamentally changed how people view uh, 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 and how people uh, 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 invest in marketing. That's exactly the revolution that we want to bring to, the, uh, to our customer. That's exactly the efficiency we want to bring to the customers. So it sounds very much like a continuation of the sort of digital transformation story that's affecting virtually every company. But I have to wonder, I mean, the last couple of years, we've been stuck in COVID, how has COVID changed the nature of the problem that, that your companies, your clients face? Yeah, and following the very first uh, uh, for the, the previous questions, I think I think because of being able to uh, uh, predict the, the future of the customer behavior, that that allow us to do something more proactively and then enrich the understanding, and as well as uh, uh, um, being able to help us uh, uh, to interact with customers in a very different way, such as in a, in a conversation in chatbot or in a messenger in natural language ways. But all of them require data. Uh, and so that's what, why uh, sometimes uh, um, in the past, a long time ago, why uh, AI cannot play a big role, but now it is actually the, the very important timing and very uh, uh, exciting timing that it can play a, a much bigger role. And COVID actually accelerates everything uh, because now we do everything online. And then, and, and then that also substantially increases the amount of data that we generate. That also enhances the capability of uh, AI to being able to use such data to predict future customer behavior, then to, to uh, bring a much better uh, performance and also much better results. Uh, maybe I can give you one example. One of our customers is an insurance, yes. insurance company. In the past, when you, uh, uh, when you have car accident, you, you have to take pictures yourself and then call your insurance agents and then bring their pictures and, and also all, all the information to, inform, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the agents. And then they will analyze a few days and then and give you a result and, uh, and report back whether you can actually make a claim. But now uh, they invent this uh, one-click claim. Basically, once it's any accident happened, you just uh, uh, click and then you automatically call the whole thing and report a location and then also report uh, the car owner information and everything, automatically trans uh, uh, transmit to the uh, 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 to, 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 to insurance company. Then immediately, based on such information, using AI to analyze the scene, then uh, um, it can actually uh, 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 support a claim or, or not, give you an immediate answer. And then at the same time, uh, 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 they can they also digi fully digitize such data, so you can actually constantly utilize actually our company's product icon continuously engage with their customer to remind them to input the uh, information, and then also uh, 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 continuously engage remind them the the the, the high type of uh, insurance coverage the customer has. So and that actually such uh, digitization make the in, uh, in the past the manual process become a very uh, uh, automated process. 
and at the same time, uh, making everything digital, make digital, and or, or, or make it uh, everything in the mobile or internet, make it very easy for them to continue have a conversation, engage with the customer. And we also help them uh, to acquire new customers, predict which type of customer will be more receptive to uh, uh, online and insurance products. And then we are, we have been able to generate. Uh, twenty four percent uptake of the uh, result of acquiring the high low, uh, high high quality loyal customers uh, with our ISIN product. That's a great use case from the insurance company. I, I really like that, and and it shows that real business benefits can result from you know developing these sort of uh, you know digital marketing chatbots essentially. But but also there's a technology angle to this story as well. I think. I mean, it, it seems to me that hardly a day goes by that we hear about, that we don't hear about, you know, things like um, improvements in natural language processing. I mean, people are talking about BERT and NLP3 and GPT-3, all these different tools that are now out there that are changing the quality and the performance of, you know, chatbots and natural language processing. And they've got to have a knock-on effect to AI-based marketing, I would have thought. Tell me, do you see sort of traditional chatbots moving towards much more deeper, more richer conversational experiences? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. I think because people do expect that chatbot to be very smart because uh, uh, we talk to people every day. So it's very, very frequent interaction we do every day. So we ha- naturally, we set a very high expectation for chatbot and messenger, automated messengers. And then because of, uh, 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 in the past, uh, the reason uh, uh, the, 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 the chatbot that cannot perform up to the expectation is that uh, it cannot actually understand and learn fast enough. All the technology you mentioned recently actually enhance the learning capability such that it can actually comprehend uh, from the latest data, data but uh, enhance the intelligence to the next level much, much faster. And being or break this kind of uh, uh, putting this into this uh, into a more positive cycle. When you actually see the the messenger respond in the relatively correct direction, you actually will be more willing to provide more data interaction. Inherently, they the the, the chatbot and the messenger can learn better and interact better. So we do see that is a tremendous help uh, with the AI uh, technology advancement that can help uh, uh, bring such application into a real. Uh, life application and make a real commercial impact. Uh, I think I think this is really a turning point for people to start having uh, chatbot or messenger as an interaction uh, point with many of, of their uh, customers and also automate a lot of process that have they have been doing manually. It's interesting you bring up the process side because I think that's something we tend to get you know we tend to ignore a little bit. Um, when discussing digital marketing is that AI is useless unless it can sort of integrate into the traditional sort of processes and infrastructure that support marketing. I mean, you know, for example, how does how does conversational AI feed into funnel management? How does it break, I think it feed into sort of broader digital marketing? Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, that back end, if you like, yeah. that AI needs to be actually useful? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. I think I think the the uh, uh, we will if, if we split the funnel into several stages: acquiring the customer, and then engage with customers, and transact with customer. Then cu- have a customer service or predict the future behavior of customer. Uh, a conversational marketing can actually help in each stage, and then there are a lot of creative uh, uh, way of the achieving that. For example. A uh, 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 young generation, uh, millennial, they all actually use messenger a way to uh, communicate with everything. For example, uh, when you uh, traditional way of user acquisition is using advertisement, but on a messenger, uh, you they can actually you can actually incentivize your loyal customers to invite more member. What we call member get member title of uh, uh, campaigns. And then you can have your loyal member to bring in uh, with a social influence, bring in, in more even more member to acquire a user. So you can actually grow your coordinates in more robustly. And in, in the engagement, not in the user acquisition stage, but engagement stage, uh, messenger can continuously uh, send the right uh, a message and ask the right question at the right time if it actually is smart enough. 
And so they can actually feel it's instead of sending an email or sending a, 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 a messages uh, through uh, uh, SMS, they feel it's actually your friend trying to text you and tell you about information about your product and your service. And such kind of engagement is much more natural than, than, than a lot of trade, uh, a digital marketing way. So we actually see that as a great potential. And customer service, and that's to say, is the first application for most of the chatbots. So you always have questions about your product you want to buy. You also have want, want to ask something for uh, about about the, the e-commerce side or brand. You want to uh, ask know more about this product or not. You can just simply instead of calling or instead of going to the store, which is much more time consuming, you can just text uh, uh, on Messenger and then the 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 AI chatbot then can answer you autonomously. I think if everything is designed very nicely it become actually a full funnel solution that can naturally interact with your customer with, is in, a, in the most comfortable way to communicate with uh, other, other friends, other people as well. So we do see that there's a great potential uh, uh, to use uh, conversational marketing and to has manage the full funnels of uh, uh, marketing activities. Now, that's really interesting. I, I'm, in one sense, it seems to me that you sort of put your money where your mouth is in some sense, because you've, you've recently made an acquisition, haven't you, in, in sort of the area of conversational AI. And I, I'd like you to sort of give us a bit of a, a sense of how that fits with APIA's broader sort of portfolio of capabilities and, and how, frankly, APIA differentiates itself in what is quite a crowded market. Yeah, thank you. I uh, actually, actually for, provide full funnel AI marketing solution from acquiring customer, we predict who is a loyal customer before even we acquire them, and engage the customer by sending the right message into the right channel, and then uh, uh, transact with them by incentivizing the right, right audience with the right incentives. And then we have a, a fourth power line that using uh, AI to predict the future of customer behavior. These four stages, we are, have been collecting the data from website and apps but we actually seen more and more a potential of a young generation and more and more people actually interact with the e-commerce or brands on messengers. And then they text them. Sometimes they, they speak to, to, to uh, leave a message by speaking to the, the, the messenger. And then this such interaction is the data is relatively unstructured, but actually it also uh, capture a lot of intent of a customer. If, so we are thinking if we can combine the, the web data and app data together, with uh, this kind of natural interaction uh, interf uh, in interface or uh, messenger text data all together, then we can have help our customer who are those uh, e-commerce and brands to have a much better understanding of their customer uh, better. And then also we are trying to also revolutionize to streamline from marketing to customer service. They used to be think as uh, be thought as a two different totally different department, but. When your customer asks you questions and during the customer service or customer feedback time, these actually become very important data for you to acquire future customer as well as engaging existing customer. So if we can streamline these two type of data, structure and unstructured, and marketing and customer service data all together, then we can build an ultimate understanding of a very complete profile of your customer so as to uh, 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 provide the most personalized services. That's the future that we are seeing. I, I think I think that message that you have there about integration of sort of marketing and customer service, service management, I think is so powerful and I have to say, but I'm gonna push you a little bit further on this direction. Um, I want you to imagine that in three years time, we had another conversation yeah. and you know maybe you have a crystal ball. I'd like you to look into this crystal ball and think about if we were to have exactly the same conversation about chatbots, what would be different in three years time as opposed to what we have today? What's changed? Yeah, I think given the speed at which that AI is making progress and the application layer that we, uh, and, uh, we are trying to, uh, we have, have been innovating. I think in the future, uh, people will just think it's as natural as uh, using mouse or keyboard to interact with computer. You just chat and uh, uh, type anything you want to ask and as natural as you ask your friends about some advice. And then they can naturally provide the information to you. And uh, if our uh, vision of uh, integrate the full funnel, uh, including from marketing to customers all together has been realized, and then such data can in the future become the ultimate understanding of your customer for the future. Um, and then uh, uh, you, the, the, uh, the brand and e-commerce no longer 
have been regarded as a place to sell something. Sometimes if, if you have a product or, or, or you have a question about a product or some related areas question, you can actually ask, ask uh, 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 um, uh, the e-commerce side or brand side that provides such services. So you can actually understand your customer needs uh, earlier and customer can get more information before they even start thinking about to, to buy something. So we will see that uh, uh, um, it become a very interesting uh, what we call expert uh, 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 and query, uh, uh, natural interacting uh, driven uh, uh, shopping experience, as well as the shopping experience will merge with as a consulting experience as well. So that will be uh, 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 the future that we are imagining. That's a, that's a great vision. And, and frankly, I think that vision is going to resonate with a lot of customers across the region and across the world. So I think that's a great story to be telling. But we've reached the end of our time today. So... Thank you so much, Dr. Chi Han Yu. Um, I hope that our listeners have enjoyed this session as much as I have. Thank you again. I hope um, uh, stay safe and uh, the best moving forward. Thank you, Chris. I really enjoyed the conversation. Stay safe. <laughs>